Brother Rutt, they say, oh, come on in, Brother Rutt. Come on in the house. How you doing there, Brother? Oh, I'm doing fine. How you? Oh, I'm doing good. So they were sitting there, and all of a sudden, the next woman comes up on the TV. <laughs> he said, son, what if we got on TV? Brother Rutt said, you don't have to hide it from me. God already saw you watching him naked women. Amen. <laughs> He said, you can't hide that from God. Hallelujah. A lot of Christians let the TV take their victory. Right. Brother Wayne, they let it take their joy. They let it take their peace. Glory to God. But you know, if we read the Bible, they was fire. The first song kind of starts, you start singing, the fire will fall when your wood is wet. Glory to God. Then he sung that song. There's fire, fire, fire shut up in my bones. It's time that we give a light. Glory to God. I told Nora, I said, we got to get some good songs. we got to get some fast songs. Glory to God. We just we was just practicing, but the Holy Ghost came on in. And we went on ahead, went on live stream. Glory to God. I'm telling you, when God comes on the scene, you just get out of the way and say, right. God, you go ahead. Right. Glory to God. Too many churches, like I said this morning, is programmed and they want to do what God, what they want to do and not what God wants them to do. But we came here to do what God wants us to do tonight. We came here to live God up tonight. Glory to God. I'm glad that everybody's came out tonight to be with us. Glory to God. I appreciate the Lord. I love Him. Hallelujah. Praise God. Man, I don't know what to do now. I just don't obey God. <laughs> Hallelujah, Brother Austin. He's been good all day. Right. He has been good all day. Brother Roger, he's been good all day. I've seen the Holy Ghost come in, sit upon Mary Ellen back there this morning. I seen that the storm that she was in, God was fixing to move that storm out of the way. Jesus was on the bow of her ship and he was calling her, saying, Don't worry, I've got this storm in my hand. Glory to God, I'm telling you tonight, church, if we put our faith and trust in God, there's nothing. There is nothing that we can't do with God. Right, amen. Right. Hallelujah. Me and Laura was talking a while ago. Hallelujah was talking about fasting. I said, I fasted the other day and you didn't even know it. I didn't tell her. You're not supposed to let nobody know when you're fasting. The Bible said to wash your face and anoint your head with oil. And you see, you fast. You don't tell nobody. You don't tell you why. You don't tell nobody. You just fast. Glory to God. And the Bible says that fasting, why it gets you closer to God. Right. And the Bible said that the flesh the old flesh is going to get weak. The old flesh is going to get hungry. The old flesh is going to say, I need something. <clears throat> and it's not the Facebook. It's not your cell phone. It's not your computer because your computer ain't going to make you weak. Your cell phone ain't going to make you weak. Your Facebook ain't going to make you weak. What's going to make you weak is when you don't eat. What's going to make you weak is when you start to, boy, you hear that stomach growling and the devil says, yeah, oh. And that's when the devil will send somebody to you and say, oh, Austin, I'll buy you a big old steak if you'll just eat today. You just go out and eat with me. I'll get you a big old steak. And the devil says, yeah, Austin, don't you want that big old steak? And you just look at the devil and say, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. That right. proceeded out of the mouth of God. Fasting makes you weak. Fasting makes you get closer to God. I told Nora, I said, it gets you into a spiritual realm that you have never been into. Glory to God, you can get into this spiritual realm, Brother Michael. Glory to God, and when you get into that spiritual realm, hallelujah, God begin to show you some things. He'll begin to reveal some things to you. He'll begin to reveal His Spirit unto you. He'll begin to show you things. Hey, you need to do this for me. Hey, you need to lay this down for me. You want to get closer to me? Start laying off some sins. Start laying off some weights. Start laying off some things that you've got holding you down. You start laying them off. People say, I want to get close to God, but they don't want to act on it. The Bible said... Faith without works is what? Dead. Dead. 
The Bible said faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of faith. things not seen. You can't see faith, but faith is there. That's right. I can't see faith right now, but faith is in the building. Amen. Jesus is in this building tonight. I can't Amen. see, but I can feel his presence right. in this house. Come on. And you want to fast? Glory to God. You say, Lord, you show me. If you fast one meal a day, you fast that meal and you give God 10% of your time that day. You pray. You read that Bible. Fasting don't only go just by fasting your plate. You've got to pray. And, and you've got to read this right here. Right. This is what feeds your soul when you get hungry. Hallelujah. You begin to eat that word. He said, I am the bread of life. You begin to eat that bread of life. Guess what? You begin to come alive. And he said, out of your bellies, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. So when you get thirsty, say, Lord, I need another drink. I just need another little drink. You know, in the Bible, Brother Wayne, when they fasted, some of them didn't even let their cows or their sheep or nothing eat during that fast. They put them in a stall. They did not feed them. They did not give them nothing to drink because they were on a fast. And they fasted. God's been showing me this for a while now. About fasting. Church, we want to get close to God. We want to see people coming into this church. We start fasting. The church will start fasting. Hallelujah. You know in the Bible it was a Daniel fast. Daniel did not eat no meat. All he ate was vegetables. That's all he ate for 21 days was vegetables. He did not eat no meat. It wasn't seasoned in meat grease or nothing. It was just vegetables. Salads. Hallelujah. And when you get hungry, when God sees that you're getting hungry, the enemy wants to come right in and say, Hey, you're hungry. You want something to eat. Grab that word and say, Devil, I got this. This right here is what's going to give me my strength. I'm telling you, I know a sister, Lord God, she lives in Florida. Her mama just passed away, but her grandma fasted anywhere from 30 to 40 days at a time. Not, a, not nothing to eat or nothing to drink for 40 days, Brother Michael. And she can look at you and tell you just like a book. She can read you just like a magazine. If she sees something in your life, she'll tell you about it. Why? Because she got into that spiritual realm of God. She got into where God wants her to be. Glory to God, sometimes we have to push. You know, I fasted one time and I was really doing good, man. I was on, I, I seemed like I was just right there and I, I was really a fasting. And all of a sudden, the devil uses the thing that you love the most. He says, oh, if you just eat, honey. I'll buy you anything you want in the store. Anything. And you know what happened, Brother Austin? I gave in. And I said, oh, I want this. And I want that. And everything that I put in that buggy, she paid for it. She wanted me to eat. <coughs> but you know what? I got a whooping for that. Because I was getting close to God. I mean, I was getting right there at that point. That man, I done got this week licked. I'm starting on the second week. Brother Austin, I done went through the first week. I done went through the rough time. I done went through the hard time, Brother Wayne. I was now just getting ready to go over into the good time. And church, that's what we got to do to get close to God. It's good to lay things aside for God. It's good to put things, personal things beside of God. You know, God's got His own convictions that He convicts our hearts with. But we've got our convictions that we say, God, I'm going to lay this down. I'm not going to drink no more Mountain Dews. I'm not going to drink no more Cokes. I'm not going to eat no more candy. Like Brother Wayne said this morning, he said that because he laid that down for God. 
We can lay things down for God. Like Brother Bill Kinslow, I remember years ago, Brother Wayne got his leg hurt. And he told the Lord, he said, Lord, if you'll heal my leg, if you don't let it hurt me no more, I won't drink no more coffee. Until the day he died, he didn't drink no more coffee. He gave that up for the Lord. But we got convictions that God will convict us of. He will condemn our hearts of it. And if he won't let one do it, he's not going to let the other one do it. I appreciate the Lord today. I love Him. Man, I'm, I, I'm glad that we got a, a God that knows what we need at the time that we need it. I'm glad that He has opened up the windows of heaven already and pouring out His Spirit. And I honestly believe that Brother Wayne has got us a good one tonight. Glory to God, or I wouldn't have asked Him today. But I know God has laid something upon His heart. Glory to God. But we're going to take up prayer requests. If you've got a prayer request, give it in real quick. Like Brother Bill used to say, fast. Give it in fast. Give it in quick. Glory to God. Because God hears them as soon as you give it in. Remember the church. Remember Sister Gertrude Taylor. She's not doing that. Amen. Well. Remember all the lost loved ones. Yes, let's remember Sister Brenda Ballard's mama. Sister Gertrude Taylor, she is really bad sick. She's in her 90s. And uh, she's really bad sick. We need to pray for her. Glory to God. Anybody else? Rita and Joe Walton, Amen. Let's remember Rita and Joe and Edward. This night. Hallelujah. Somebody else? Mallard, she and Joe keep her mom in prayer. Yes, we request a prayer for her this morning. Anybody else? I remember my mom. Uh, she, uh, she just went to... Her second major back surgery, she's had two in the last uh, three years. She's had three. She's had three uh, in the last <coughs> three years. Um, she had one here about, roughly about three, weeks, three years ago, the first one. Um, and she's only, at the time, she was only 38, I think, 37, 38. And then three years later, 40, 41, she's having to do it again because. Her, her back just got in such bad shape. She had vertebrae collapse, and I don't know. I don't, you know, know uh, everything in detail. I can't remember it all at once. But uh, she, she was back got in pretty bad shape. She had to do it again, and then uh, so the second time she had to have two surgeries, and uh, she had to have one on a Wednesday and one on a Thursday. Uh, and she's the medicine that they've got her on for pain and everything. It, it depression and anxiety and nervousness, things of that nature, uh, you know, things of the devil's nature, uh, are some of the side effects. Uh, and she's been, she's been, she's been down. Uh, she's been depressed. She had real bad anxiety. Uh, so y'all keep her in prayer that uh, she'll be able to. Just have a little bit more faith and claim that victory. And y'all pray for me that I can witness to her. Um, she's, I wouldn't say she, she's not stuck in her ways, but even ask my wife, she can be a little hard headed sometimes. Can't, but can't we all, you know, we can all be hard headed, you know, especially guys. But uh, y'all just pray for me that I'll be, I can, uh, God will give me something to say to her that will help her. Um, Give me a seed to plant, and then just let God take over. Uh, and also remember us as a family, uh, me and Tony and the kids. No, we've had a pretty good afternoon, um, some fun together, spent some time together as family, um, and you know we had a pretty good time. And then all of a sudden, right before we come to church, there comes that little devil trying to sneak in and discourage. Uh, so y'all just keep us in prayer that we won't be discouraged um, and that we'll continue seeking after the Lord, seeking after His kingdom. Uh, that we'll just, uh, as the Bible says, I don't remember what verse it is, but uh, just that we'll lay all our treasures in heaven and, and keep our eyes on, on heaven. Um, that uh, we, we'll just get through it. Amen. Somebody else? Remember me and my family and all my lost loved ones tonight. Amen. That's right. Somebody else? Continue to remember me and Joshua that we'll do what God wants us to do. 
Yes. 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 Somebody else. Brother David, let's remember Shirley Woman Tongue was talking about her family. And uh, remember uh, Gene Jensen. I used to work with him. And uh, also pray for uh, Lord Eisenberg died tonight. Amen. Man, let's remember Brother Derek tonight. He's down in Plano church down there in Plano, Kentucky, down there at Brother Kevin Hinton's church having a revival tonight. So let's pray for him that God will just open up the windows of heaven for him. How do you also remember my family? I got lost loved ones that needs to be saved. I got brother-in-law, sister-in-law, got nieces and nephews that needs to know God. Glory to God. We need to pray for him. How do you also let's pray for uh, Sister uh, Kathleen Sykes. She needs our prayers and she needs a touch from God herself. Glory to God, pray for her and her church. Glory to God, because it would love, it would do the enemy good to see that church shut down down there. And it's been going good. God has really blessed that church. And it's blessed Sister Kathleen. She's lived a long life, Brother Wayne. And, and it would do the enemy good just to say, try to do something to close that church down. But let's keep her up in prayer tonight. Hallelujah. Somebody else. Also, y'all continue to remember uh, Addie with her thrush. Uh, and uh, y'all remember uh, some of y'all know him y'all remember Tony's little brother Derek uh, seems to be getting on the right track very slowly um, but he, he still got a ways to go um, just uh, keep praying that uh, God will put that conviction on him um, so that he'll you know, cry out to God and he'll give his life back to God and start living for him. Amen. Uh, also, remember Tanya. She's, uh, this afternoon, she's been hurting a little bit in her back. Says she thinks she's pulled a muscle or something. So, y'all remember her. Amen. Also, let's remember uh, Brother Ud. He's on his way back home. He might go be home by now. I don't know. But remember him tonight because he's traveling on the highway. With God give him a safe trip. Hallelujah. We need to lift everybody up tonight in right. prayer. Glory to God, there's a lot of sickness out there. There's a lot of people that's sick today. Glory to God, remember Brother Herbert Ballard also tonight. Hallelujah. He's been having dizzy spells. And God knows what that is. God can take care of it. Amen. I'm going to do something different tonight. I want us all just stand tonight and we're going to go before the Lord in prayer. If you got unspoken requests, lift your hand. Glory to God, we're just going to ask God just to bless these requests that He moves upon. Ain't it time that we give the devil, not give the devil what we're going to do, not let him know what we're going to do? Just do it. Glory to God. Heavenly Father, God, as we come to you, Lord God, we thank you, God, for another opportunity. God, to be in your house, Lord. But God, we pray, God, you remember these needs and these requests, this Lord. God, you know each and every need, you know each and every request, God, has been given in. And Heavenly Father, God, we just ask Lord God, you need the sickness, God. You see the lost loved ones tonight. And God, we just ask that you would move, God. Lord God, you see the hands that we up, Lord. I pray, God, that you move upon those things, dear God. I pray, God, for our country, Lord. I pray for our nation, Lord God. I pray for the peace of Jerusalem, Lord. I pray for Israel, Lord God. God, I pray for our military. God, that you have to I pray a hedge of protection around them, God. A protector in your car. God, we ask it in your such name. God, to move in this service tonight. God, not our will, but you will be done in this place. God, we give you praise. We give you glory. God, we give you honor, God. God, we pray for our president. God, we pray for our vice president, Lord. God, we pray for our senators and our governors and our congress. Lord God, we pray. God, you touch on them. God, you move, God. Give them the wisdom and the knowledge that they need, God. God, I pray for this church. God, I pray for the people that's in this church, God. I pray, God, you begin to lighten things upon them. I pray, God, you begin to show them some things. God, I pray that you begin to show them the lay things aside. God, to get closer to you, God. God, we just give you praise. We give you more tonight, God. God, we just ask God that you do for the mighty way. Bless the singing. Lord, bless the singing tonight. Anointed, God, we ask. 
God, just let the Holy Ghost come in this place tonight. God, anoint Brother Wayne as he brings that word forth tonight. God, you give him the words to say. God, it'll make us pull our toes back. Skin them back. God, skin the hat off them. Lord, you just give him the words to say tonight. God, and we praise you. Lord, we thank you, God, for our live stream audience. God, we pray, God, that you would just reach out and touch them. God, we thank you for those that tuned in this morning, God. God, we just ask that you would bless them. God, if they be lost, save them, Lord. God, if they be back, I'd bring them back to you, Lord. God, we ask. God, in your son's name, in the church to say, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God, last brother Austin, if he'll take up the offering this tonight. Glory to God. If you got something you want to give, you just give it unto the Lord. God will bless you back for it. Hallelujah. God is a, a, a good God. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask Brother Josh to pray on the offering. Thank you, Lord, for this offering, Lord, that you're about to bless us with, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you bless the ones that they give, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that you have a good service tonight, Lord. And just bless everybody here, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Sometimes we have just to mix things up. Hallelujah. Glory to God.
You and Brother Daniel, y'all ain't sung in a while. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Brother Charles, you and Cassie has been silent for <coughs> way too long.
Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thanks for having me in the house, Lord and I. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, Brother David asked me this morning, before it was this afternoon, brother. I sat there and I said, Yeah, I'll preach. Hadn't had a thought come to me or nothing. And then about 4 30, I just read my Bible and I opened it up. God opened it up right there. But he's telling you what I said this morning. You know, the Lord been dealing with me for about two or three weeks about them sweet cakes. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> hey, tell you the truth. And I said that to Peter. You say, why don't you? You sit at that computer a lot? Yeah. But you know what? I've got a Bible a site on there that I go to. Right. And I, I read that every morning. When I turn that thing on, I go there. And then, while I'm reading sometimes, I go to YouTube and I put on a bunch of good gospel music of the Perry's. Yeah. Bible yeah. Combs. You know, sit down and listen to that music. Yeah. And meditate on the Lord. Yes. See, that key and Peter can be used for good things. Right. Yeah. Instead of bad things. Right. Last night I put a, uh, I prayed, put a little prayer on there before I went to bed, pray for the youth of the church. Yes. That God bless them and protect them and go with them each and every day with their life. Yes. I've seen that. And uh, not bragging on me, I'm just telling you that yes. that plan can be used for good things. Well, David preached on Facebook this morning. Well, it didn't bother me one bit. Because you can do good things on that Facebook. Yes. You know, uh, yes. It's what you choose to do and what you let that devil do. That's right. Yeah. You know, it's been a good spirit here tonight. Bless you, Lord. Yeah. If we would have opened up, Brother That's David. Right. That's right. Instead of sitting on our seats. Right. And we'd lick them air brakes off. Right. The Holy Ghost would have come through here and move yes. like we hadn't seen. You know, two weeks ago yes. we come in. Because we came in with Him on our mind. Right. Tonight we should have done the same thing. Especially Amen. We're preaching we had this morning. Yeah, I'm not going to preach on His message. Because yeah, that's what God gave Him to preach to y'all. Yeah, but it stirred my soul. Yeah, Bless you, Lord. Sometimes He stands up here and preaches. And I'm saying, Lord, tell him, tell him, tell him. And just do it. He preached a few weeks ago, if y'all remember, he preached on the walls of Jericho. Uh huh. He told you about them walls coming down. I thought, Lord, tell them, tell him to tell them how wide that wall was. Uh -huh. So they'll understand what kind of God we serve. Amen. You say, why are you going to tell us? Yeah, I'm going to tell you so you understand how strong of a God we serve and who we serve. That wall was wide enough, Brother Michael, that them soldiers. Yeah. If you do your research and you study and read. Right. It says they raced their chariots yes, around, they the they the around the top of that. Around the top, sir. Amen. That's how wide that was. Yes. Right. You said, well, they had to march seven days around that thing to get it to come down. Honey, I don't care if I got to march a hundred. Hundred days around something where it's yeah. coming down that wall coming down. I'm gonna do it. Right. I crawl, yeah. roll, run, whatever it takes. If there's walls in my life, yes. I'm gonna go. Yeah, right. Because I don't want nothing hitting me. And I don't want nothing weighing me down tonight. Yeah, you know, that's not what I've got on my mind. Bless him more. Then on my heart. And that's not what the Lord did with me with. Come on. I went home and I sat there at the table. Talked with Connie a little bit and I told her. I said, ain't it good? Or oh, something on that line. This might be different words than what I told her. I said, it's good to go to church where you can see everybody in that church have a hunger. And a, and a desire to yes. serve the Lord. Yes. There's a hunger in this church among Amen. each and every one of you Amen. sitting here tonight Amen. wanting to work for the Lord. Right. Right. But there's things in your life, as Brother David preached about, that you need to 
Lay them yeah. right to do them. I told her, I said, I believe it's coming. And I believe everybody's wanting to work for the Lord. Right. <laughs> and when everybody gets in that mind to work for the Lord, Brother David. That's right. That old He's Alive Community Church may be small. Yeah. And we may be poor. Come on. But honey, let me tell you something. What we got on the inside, we're richer than any man walking the line. He might move on a sinner to bring me groceries. That's I don't right. know. Right. But I know it's going to be by God. That's when right. in the end. Bless him, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Friend, I talked to you about Moses the other night. Mm -hmm. The Israelites longed for a deliverer. Uh huh. They ate, they yearned, and they kept on working even though the enemy was beating them. Right. Until God sent that deliverer, Moses, uh -huh. to lead them out. Right. God's going to lead us out one of these days, Brother David. Yes. But first, as Brother David preached this morning, there's walls in people's lives. Right. There was people here this morning. I know who should have testified. I yes. know who should have told. Yes. Told the church this morning what God is dealing with them about. Right. He you said, "You going to call me out?" No. God revealed it to me. Yes. The Lord. Yes. Yes. And you're here tonight. Yep. Mm -hmm. You want to work for God? Uh huh. Come on. He wants you to work for Him. Yes, He does. Yep. There's a story in there, Brother David. As you preached this morning yep, about God giving some having God having them do something. Yes. And how they wanted God to move it off on someone else. Yeah. Yep, Friend, God's calling you to do something. Yep, and you and you want to bury it. Yep, Come on. Tonight. And so bearing it, and so doing, but bearing it, yeah. God wants you to do. You're hurting yourself. That's right. You're hindering your family from working for the Lord, from getting right. saved, yeah. getting saved and coming to the Lord. Right. You're hurting your witness. Right. Lord, brother David, I didn't know what I was going to go with. Come on, come on, bless him, Lord. Come on. Oh, thank God. Friend, Whatever it is that's hindering you tonight, right? You better start laying it down. That's right. See now, I'm going back to my sweet case. Come on. Lord, he said, Wayne, you look. I sat there. The Lord said, Give up them sweet cakes. Come on, brother. I said, Lord. Come on. Sweet cakes. Man. I said, Lord, you did with me on my Snickers years ago. I said, I gave them to you. He said, Yeah, now I want your sweet cakes. I said, Lord, two dollars. He has a way of getting your attention. Yes, he can. I ain't crazy. Come on. Like Mike Pence, we ain't crazy. No. We know the one we serve. Right, right. We know this boy. Amen. You know, Brother David was just talking about fasting wrong ago. This morning there were several around the church talking about fasting. I ain't said nothing to nobody. Come on. Hey, Lord. Guess what? Lord been doing Wayne fast. Yes. Lord. Yeah. And when Wayne fast, you know what? Ain't none of y'all want to know nothing about it. That's right. Yeah. None. That's right. That's right. Lord. That's right. I'm going to go give him some olive oil. Yes. I'm going to give him some lemon juice. Yes. Lord. I'm going to drain him some water. 
Come on. Maybe a coke and not the pepper. And I'm going to pray. I'm going to meditate. Right. I'm going to listen to some good gospel music. Because that music drives the devil insane. Yes, it does. And he can't stand. That's right. Where the presence of the Lord is. Come on. Right. So some of you may be listening to country music yeah. on the radio. Yeah. I'm not judging you. I'm just telling you, maybe you turn that country music over to a gospel Amen. Station. Yes, come on. Everything on them gospel stations is worth listening to. Come on. You know which is good to listen to, which is, and I'm not going to tell you. But if you obey God, friends, we're fixing to see something happen in He's a Life Community Amen. Church. Amen. We ain't never seen it. Amen. 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 You wait until we get one mind and one court as they yeah. get on the day of Pentecost. Right. Amen. Because I believe that God is fixing to do something here. I stand on it. I stand on the Word of God. Amen. I'll go with my grave, believe me. If I die before it happens. Hallelujah. Because God don't lie, friends. Right. He don't show people things. And it might happen. Right. You know, Brother Roger, he came yesterday and brought me a recliner in my son, boss. This morning I come in a little late. He said, I'm going to repossess that recliner. <laughs> I said, yeah, you slept that thing. You slept too good. Well, part of that's true. <laughs> I slept. I got in this morning at the phone room and I fell back to sleep. <laughs> Anyways, you know, Tanya and Gavin, don't they? Oh, yeah. Dedicated their child to the Lord today. Yes. Yeah. Connie and I donated ours. Donated. Dedicated. Dave and I both get tongue tied. <laughs> See, that's why I like coming to this little. Bro, I just don't get mad at you. That's why I like coming to this little. As this son, one of the sons says, he'll be the redneck church. Yeah. So <laughs> we all want a life. Really. Yeah, come on. Plain English is the best way I know how to talk. I can't talk to this other stuff. Right. Come on. I went through a drive through the other day and God said, Get this without this humming. I said, Yeah, I'll have a something, something cheeseburger. Hold the onions. What? Hold the onions. Hold the onions. I said, Yes, ma'am. Hold the onions. That's the way I pronounce it. Onions. <laughs> Connie makes fun of me every time I say it. <laughs> but you know what? She always said I was from a hit from the sticks. <laughs> Come on. Amen. But I'm going to tell you something, friend. We need to obey God. Amen. Right. We need to mind God. Right. He's coming back, friend. He's wanting to work in our lives. Amen. He's wanting us. To be a beacon to Glasgow, Kentucky. Right. Or wherever you may live. He wants you to shine. Come on. For Him. Right. And Him only. And when that enemy comes against you, you get in that Word of God. Right. You say, well, Wayne, I don't have a witness to anybody. Come on. Honey, that's easy. Say, Brother Michael, can I talk to you a minute? I don't know much about that Bible, but I know one scripture in there that's for sure that every man should know. It says in John 3 16. For God so loved the world, that he gave his own right to God the Son, right. that whosoever believeth shall be saved. Uh -huh. Come here. That may be all you know. And you don't never know the person that you might touch by sharing it with them. That's right. And then that per it may touch them so hard. It may come straight to the heart. And God begin to deal with them. <coughs> then that person's all the same. Well, Wayne, can't you teach me? No, but I can tell you all you've got to do is say, Jesus. talk to Jesus like uh -huh. me and you are. And talk with your poor heart. Right. Like this, right. Your 
right. sins before yeah. Tell them you're sorry and you want to live for them. Right. Yeah. Friends, time is near. Amen. Time's running out. Amen. Now I'm going to read to you. That way you know I do have spiritual. <laughs> Bless you, Lord. He says it don't matter if you read that scripture. We all know that. He says, Romans 13 11. Yes, come on. And that knowing the time is now, that now it is high time. Yes. To wake out of a sleep. Right. For now is our salvation. Nearer than when we begin. Right. The night is far spent. Uh -huh. Day is in hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. Right. Put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as the day in day, not in writing or drunkenness. Right. But in chambering and wantonness. Not in striving in him. The pledge ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. And make not provisions for the flesh. Yeah. To fulfill the lust thereof. Right. Friend. Church. 
You won't have a key again, but you'll bring that glass to get to this altar. Come on. And you'll cry out. And you'll ask the Lord to save you. Right. But friend, it's too late. Right. God's done come back, send his son back. He done took his children. Right. Home. And he's pulled his spirit away from this place. That's right. It'll be no more. That's right. The end is near. Nearer than we think. Come on. You and I need to be about our Father's business. Right. And I don't mean be about his business going over here and tell this and about that and what that's doing. Right. And then that and going and telling that and what that's doing in the church. Right. Friend, if you spend more time picking up the little, uh, the little sticks and branches in your own backyard mm, and living for God like you should. Right. And if you see the other folks got things in their life they shouldn't have, as Brother David preached this morning, you pray for them. Amen. Right. And lift them up in prayer because Amen. God is the only one that can help them Amen. and change them. You, all you can do is tear them down, put them down, close them, get out of church, and you die and go to that devil's tail. You keep because you've got sin in your life. Right. You know, Jesus said he'd rather a millstone be tied around our neck and cast into the sea Amen. than the hard one of his little ones. Amen. That's what's wrong today. We've got too many behind the pulpit, yeah. too many men, right. women, right. men. And listen to that, lady members, for offending the children of God. Mm, I don't know. We've got a little national television. Yeah, we're going to see right. the defending the children of God. The children of God have gotten tired of it. They've gotten sick of it. Yeah. They're telling us to stand. They're standing up. They're calling it quality. They are crazy. They're quality. Come and get us. We're quality. Come and get us. We're ready to go. Come on. And then we'll stop and play. I got loved ones. Mm, that's what's holding Jesus from coming back. That's right. Because he knows you got loved ones in that heart. That's right. That you want to see saved. Amen. That's right. And want to go to heaven with you, friend. Because you've been praying for Oh, bless you, Lord. And if my memory serves me right, Sister Nora, it says in that word, that he'll give you the desires, desires of your heart. heart. Right. And my desire in my heart, my son's been got right with the boys. Right. You know, that's number one on my list. Right. But I got other members of my family on both sides. Right. That need the Lord. Amen. And I pray they come to their senses, son. Because if I don't. Help him, Lord. Bless him, Lord. Come on, Brother White. If I don't keep praying for them, yep. right. then their blood's going to be on my hands. Yep. Right. When I stand before that throne of judgment, I can just see their names and the blood coming off of it, Brother David. Yep. As I'm standing here, I can see names and yep. blood. And I can see that blood runs off my head. Come on. I can see those names of those loved ones, friend. Yep. You say, well, y'all are crazy. Jesus. Friend, we're not crazy. Mentally crazy. Right. We're spiritually crazy for the Lord. Right. And we know where we've been. And we know what we've been through. And we don't know exactly what you've been going through. But we've been down that road similar to. And the best thing about us is we're going to lead you to someone. Right. That can take you and turn you around. And he'll not only clean you up on the inside, he'll clean you up on the outside from the time you head to the soul of the deep. You'll go home singing and rejoicing. You know, when I first come back to the Lord, I go home. Well, I probably boy. ate something. I go to bed. He said, You get down on your knees and pray. Help me, Jesus. I may have, and I may not have. But I do know this one thing. 
I'd fall off sleep and I'd be praying, Brother David. Uh -huh. I'd wake up sometimes while I'd pray. I'd wake up while I'd pray. Uh -huh. I'd wake up and I'd still be praying. Amen. Sometimes I'd wake up, Brother Michael, my, I'd be laying on my side. My legs, my legs would be like under running. Uh -huh. And I'd be Lord. speaking in tongues. Why not wake up? Uh -huh. Oh, Lord, why'd you let me wake up? Uh -huh. I was mean, asleep. But my spiritual man, he was getting what he needed Amen. from the Lord. We need to get back to doing those things. That's right. Push that plate back. Never TV time back. Right. This well, brother here said he spent time with his family. That's all good to do. And then he sent it inside for that. Many other days of time that week, he spent a little time, more time with the Lord. When you get there, you'll be surprised what God will do for you. That's and right. Family. You'll be surprised that you'll see people coming up to you saying, hey, I've been watching you. Uh huh. And I see God's been moving on you. Right. You know, Brother David, I had a very bad habit. A very bad habit. When I was younger. And sometimes I still do it every now and then. But I catch myself. Uh huh. I used to say the first thing that popped in my mind. Yep. If you said something to me, buddy, it'd come out. And it wasn't necessarily cussing. It was just that sometimes the way I said it was people. Yeah. And when I got in church, I was still doing that. Come on. And God said, well, you need to watch what you say. Right. What do you mean? She said, you need to start thinking before you speak. Yeah. Right. And I've done that so long that it took me a while to get out of that. But God brought me out of that. And every now and then I feel that old dog coming back up in me, you know? Yeah. See, I got a... Y'all can't see it. But my flesh has got a dog leash on it. <laughs> so you know what I do every now and then I feel it coming on? I'll reach up for that grill bit and I'll jerk myself backwards. Yeah. Because I want to keep myself in subjected to the Word of God. Amen. To the Spirit of God. Amen. And I don't want no one's blood on my hands. Right. I won't play. Hallelujah. Friend, the question is tonight. Do you want to do what God wants you to do? Amen. I know you're living for him. And there's something that God's called you to do. Son. Oh, bless you, Jesus. Bless you, Jesus. Have you been wrestling with him? Yes. Somebody may even put out a place before the Lord. Yes. I don't know. They say, well, I'm in the spring. I don't know. Is it the same? I don't know. Is it the testify? I don't know. But God will use you if you're willing to let Him use you. Right? And you get in that realm. You know, Brother Abel, when I was younger growing up, you say, why don't you? Well, you fix to say, well, it's kind of a little sitting and grossing, but it's to get the point across. See, I had sinus problems real bad. bad. And I still do. Come on. And that old home remedy we did when I was at home. I'd go around and sink. I'd turn the warm water on, hot water on, cold water on, and get warm. Yeah. And I'd suck it up my nose. And all of a sudden, I feel everything start draining out. Friend, tonight, we got somebody in this house and needs to come down here at this altar. Right. And get under that fountain of the Holy Ghost that God's poured out. Right. And you need to be again to suck it into your life. Right. And let it lead you and guide you. Right. The way He wants you to go. Amen. You say, Wayne, what are you talking about? There's somebody here tonight, Brother David, I believe, they're fighting within themselves the flesh. Right. And I believe they're fighting the Spirit tonight. Right. You say, Wayne, did you know people were going to be here? No, I didn't know who was going to be here. Warfare. <laughs> You're in a spiritual warfare, brother, that we just mentioned. Right. But I'm going to tell you something. There's someone here tonight that he'll bring you through that warfare. Yes. And he'll give you the armor to put on. Right. He'll give you the things to fight against that tonight. And he'll give you the strength to stand. Right. You know, that devil may whoop you in a corner. Right.
right? But once you get in that corner, you look out. Just about to get boxed. You get that box in the corner and he can't move. Right. He can't do nothing. Eventually, he's going to start going some hay by your spin. You get in that corner and that Holy Ghost comes on the scene, brother David. Come on. I believe that Holy Ghost is going to give you a haymaker to throw in at that old devil. Amen. He's going to knock down for a while. Where'd that come from? He said, that comes from my way because he knows I was in trouble. And his name is the only one I call on. Right. When I'm sick, come on. And when I'm down in trouble. Right. It don't matter what comes your way, friend. You call upon the name of yeah, Jesus. Come on. And when you call upon his name, I believe all of heaven stands still. And I believe the devils begin to run. Right. I believe they run as fast as they can, brother David. Right. Oh, hell, to hide from him because they know he ain't coming back down there for him. Right. He done been there once. Come now, on. there were some people that were there in the town of Noah. He done brought them out. He ain't going back down there no more. Oh, and by, by the way, while I was there, he took the keys of death, hell, and the grave for you.
They didn't dream of me and him sitting there. He's got a cushion chair, and I've got a big cushion chair. And I don't know what it means that we're supposed to preach on hell, hot, hell fire, brimstone. Or was it just something the Lord did on me? But I've dreamed that dream two times during the last two weeks. And the second time I had that dream, brother, man, that person and that dream stepped in over it. And that person shot up towards heaven. Folks, I think that we are here. Like I said, there's people dying and going to hell. I believe we're put here to pull down the pits of hell. Amen. It ain't nothing he does, or I do, or any of these other lay members do, or, and preachers do in the church. It's nothing they do, but it's what God does. That's right. And I believe what God ordained is for us to be here. And I believe when we, like I said, the end is near. And there's people here wanting to work. And you're hungry to work. Thank you, Gavin. You're hungry to work. And you're wondering why ain't the Lord talking to me about it. Hallelujah. How you know He ain't. And That's you just right. don't listen. Amen. There's That's been right. plenty of times He's talked to me and I've <coughs> turned the volume off. Because uh -huh. it's interfering in what? Wasting time, won't it? See, when we get in the realm of God, see, we begin to die out. Uh -huh. the things of the world. And we put away the flesh. And when we put away the flesh, we put away the lust of the flesh. Right. And we stay in the realm of God. And God will reveal things to each and every one of us. Yes, He will. Providing, providing we allow Him to, friend. That's right. We've got to get to a place in our life for God to use us and for us to be obedient. To do his will. Amen. When he quit hiding things. You know, this morning, Brother David, my mind went back to a church that I've shared this before. Bless you, Lord. We went to a church before this woman was up there praying. And, uh, and I was praying for that woman in my seat. And God was all over me. The Spirit of God was all over me. And went, go pray for her. Go pray for her. And I wanted to be disobedient. Right. I said, David, I pray for you to talk to you. And I said, God, you tell that. He said, I said, you. I said, God, there's others up there. You do that. And finally, man, I couldn't stand still. I couldn't sit. I just got up and went. And I went to that woman. And I told her everything she was going through. I told her what God told me to tell her. And she would not accept it. No. She went home letting the devil defeat her. Where she opened up for what the Lord told me to tell her. Nothing in me. But God chose to use me that night. So that that woman would be blessed. Because of my stature in that church. She would not take it. Say, was it bad stature? No. I'm saying because I was a poor boy. She would not take it away. Right. You say, Wayne, you mean there's people like it? Yes. Yes, there is. Yes. That's why I didn't want to go up there. But I went anyway. And I believe God tested me that night to see if I'd be obedient to him. Right. Knowing that she wasn't going to listen to a word I was telling her. I went back to my seat. I prayed with her and prayed with her. And I kept telling her, kept telling her, kept telling her. And I went back to my seat that night. And I sat down. I said, Lord, I done what you said to do. I thought, and I done what you said to do. Now I can go home and I have no worries about it. Friend, tonight, God's telling you to do something. And you do it no matter how stupid it is. You may think it is. Well, they stood in this chair, and I'm sure a lot of people thought he was crazy. Thought he had flipped his lid. 
Some old brother really called the sound to bring a straight jacket for me. But see, when you get the Spirit and in the realm of the Spirit, where God wants you to, He'll use you beyond the measure that you thought you would ever be used. He used Moses. And he couldn't hardly talk. He stuttered. He stuttered. And but God gave him a mouthpiece and brought him to speak yes, for what Moses told him to say. So it don't matter where you are or what you are. God loves you just the same as that rich man. That's right. Amen. He loves each and every one of us. Brand, I'm going to tell you something. The end is near. And we're, what are you going to be doing in the end? Amen. Amen. Sister Norton, you want to give us a song? The end is near. This altar is open. It's Amen. never closed. Them doors may be closed. But I guarantee you, you pick up the phone and call Brother David, myself, and you want to pray. I know how to get in that thing. I've got to keep telling that kid. Right. And we'll pray. We're going to tell you what you need. Come on, Jesus.
he was up preaching one night and man I was putting my feet back as far as I could behind them benches because I didn't want him to get on my toes and the Holy Ghost came forth and said if he can't get on your toes then nobody can and the next night he got up to preach I just stuck my foot out that much farther I said get on Lord just get on my toes because I didn't want to have him to not let the him to get on my toes. I wanted all my toes. Hallelujah. I remember years ago, a preacher come and preached. Brother Wayne, and he preached on the counselors chopping at your tree. He said, how do you know if you're really sanctified or not? He said, how many of you got up out of your bed to go to the bathroom at night? You don't have the light on you and you stumble your toe over the bedpost and you say, mm -hmm. He said, the counselor is chopping at your tree. He said, are you running to the bathroom door? What's the first thing to come out of your mouth? It ain't old Jesus. He said, the counselor is chopping at your tree. Man, I thought, man, that's good. Well, the next morning, I started getting up out of the bed, and I did. I stuck my toe on the bed post. The first thing that came out of my mind was, thank you, Jesus, because I remember what that preacher said. I didn't want the Lord chopping at my tree. I wanted to make sure my tree was growing strong. Hallelujah. I remember my dad used to be a carpenter. I was telling Brother Budden that up here the other day when we was putting this platform in here. Uh, my dad would go and work all day long in a factory. Work all day long. Go in at 5.30. Come in at 4 o'clock. Brother Wayne, get off at 4 o'clock. Come home at 4.30. Come in and grab him a little bite to eat. He'd jump in the old truck and we would head off and he'd get all those boys we had to have our homework done time he got home. And we would head off and we would go out and stay out till about 10 or 11 o'clock at night if it wasn't church night. Now if they was in a revival somewhere, my dad wouldn't go work. He'd tell them they just have to hold on. But we would go out and he would build these apartment complexes and he'd build houses. And me and my brothers, we were the ones that done the painting. We painted the insides of them and, and we done the trim work and stuff. And and uh, but he hired this black guy to work for him. They was up on the roof, and every time my daddy would hit his hand with that hammer, my dad's all oh, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Well, that black guy would hit his hand with that hammer, and he would bring out a bad word. And he said, "I'm sorry, Mister Miller. I'm sorry." My daddy be a hammer that machine with Brother Adam, and he go. Wow, he did his son. He said, oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And that black guy said, Mr. Miller, don't that hurt? He said, but Jesus takes care of me. <laughs> My daddy never did try to force nothing on that black man, but every time he would, he would say a bad word. My daddy just prayed for him. One day they was up there and I was, I was packing shingles. I was packing them up the light of Brother Wayne and I handed them the shingles. And that black man, he was really going to town with that hammer. But they didn't have them staplers like they had. We had old hammers and we had to nail them shingles down. And boy, he was really a pop. And all of a sudden he said, pow, he did something. He said, oh, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> he looked at my dad. He said, Mr. Miller, Mr. Miller, it works, it works, it works. <laughs> Then on we hit his tongue. He said, it works, it works. <laughs> now look, you let your light shine, it's going to work. That'll preach. <laughs> I'm glad everybody came out tonight. Laughter is good like a medicine. Yeah, we got a prayer over a prayer box tonight. Uh, like we said, we'll go about fasting. When God tells you to do it, do it. Do it. But next month, March, the church is going to go on a fast. The church. The whole church. We're going to go on a fast. I've been praying, talking to the Lord. This has been on my mind for a while, Brother Wayne. And you know what the devil's oh you got that thing for the youth, you can't do it this month. You got that thing for the youth. You can't you can't call a fast one churches this month. 
yesterday, March, came to me. And guess what the devil said a while ago to me? Brother Michael, why you can't do that in March? You service coming up Thursday night. All those other things going March. We're going to start a fast. You say, how many days, Brother Miller? Well, Daniel keeps coming to me, Brother Wayne. A Daniel fast, 21 days. How many wants to see God do something in the church? Amen. How many wants to know that God can do something? Amen. You say, Brother Miller, does that mean all of us? The ones that want to participate. And if you do participate, don't break that fast. Don't break the fast. You want to fast one meal, that's fine. But we're all going to fast. If you want to feel like you need to fast three or four days with nothing at all, fast those three or four days. The next time, fast a meal. Just however you feel to fast. But I want you to fast food. I don't want you to fast your cell phones. I don't want you to fast your games. I don't, because that's not going to draw you strength. That's not going to get you nowhere. That's not going to make you weak. Oh, I can't play my video game. I'm going to get weak. <laughs> but your flesh has got to get weak. The spirit man will get weak, but God said, I'll make it strong. The spirit man gets stronger and stronger. But that flesh will get weak. Jesus' flesh got weak when he was on the mountain fasting. For 40 days, Brother Austin, he, he got weak. And when the devil seen that he was getting weak, what did the devil do? He came to him and tempted him. Do you think you're better than Jesus? Because he's going to tempt you too. But guess what? Like Brother Wayne said, use that word. Take that word. Say it is written. When you say it's written, the devil's going to say, oh, no. They read that Bible. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Satan told Jesus, said, if thou be the Son of God, command these stones to be made bread. They, he knew he was the Son of God. And he knew that all Jesus had to do was say, turn the bread, and that stone would have made bread. Because he took five loaves of bread and two little fishes and fed 5,000, not counting the women and the children. 5,000 men he fed. And had enough left over that they had it for the next day. So when you think that you say, well, Brother Miller, is fasting going to help us? Yes, it is. And can I tell you, when you fast, say, Lord, help our church. God, you send the people into the church. God, you start bringing people in. That's what I want to fast for is to see people come into the house of God. See the lost come in. We want to see the lost come in and get saved. And I want to see y'all get stronger. I want to see y'all get closer to God. I want to see God start using you. Hallelujah. You know, people say, oh, Brother Miller, it's, it's hard to push that plate. Yes, it's hard to push them plates back. It is hard. Did you know, Lord, ever since God's healed her, she's eating the table legs off the table. I guess she'll eat anything. We said, no mercy. She said, just ate a few minutes. Man, I'm hungry. I think I'm going to go in there and make me a chicken salad sandwich. She go in there and she eat that. Sister Connie, about an hour later, she said, I'm hungry. I'm going to go there and get me some oatmeal. She go in there and make her some oatmeal. Be sitting there, man, give me a piece of that candy over there. She get up. Well, where's them Cheetos at? I need a bag of them Cheetos. <laughs> That's how I know God's touched her. <laughs> I suppose you just eat all you want, but she still looks like she's losing weight because the doctor said she told her if you weigh that much, she lose. She lost 11 pounds. Believe it or not, God's honest truth. I've lost 35 pounds. I've been thanking Lord. According to the scales at the doctor's office. And when she was up there, I weighed on those scales up there at the doctor's office, and I lost five more pounds. 
And I don't know where because I ate all them cookies at Bonnie's. I ate about a dozen of cookies at Bonnie's are over. New strawberry donuts. Man, they were the bomb. I done started on them. Nah, I told Nora I wanted to get down to 150. She said, No, I don't want you down to that. I said, Well, I'm going to get down to 175, so I'm working on it. I feel a lot better. I feel better. I might have to some more clothes to wear. And new britches carry got me. They want to fall off of me. I pull the belts. I pull the belts so tight that they start buckling up around me. And I thought, man, I can't do this. But uh, I appreciate. They ain't no school tomorrow. Tomorrow. They're having school tomorrow. They ain't supposed to do that. Well, tomorrow's President Day. How many going to pray for a president tomorrow? He needs our prayers. He does. He needs our prayers. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask Cassie to pray over a prayer box tonight. Anybody else that wants to help? It's done been anointed. We want you just to pray over these needs. If anybody's got a need, Anybody that's got a prayer request you want to put in this box, write it on a piece of paper and just drop it down in this box. Brother David, when we was praying for Danielle a while ago, I felt the fever leave. It went all the way through my body and out my feet. And I told Kayla that and she just checked it. And she said it is 99.5 and she's sitting up there like nothing was wrong. Amen. Hallelujah. Say his word and his word is Heavenly Father, Lord God, as we bring this prayer box to you once again tonight, God. God, we pray, Lord God, that you move upon these needs and these requests as God, you know each and every one. God, we ask, God, that you would touch, God, you would move, God, upon the sickness, Lord. God, you see the sickness, God, you see the lost loved ones, God, you see those, God, it's in the depression, Lord God, you see those, God, it's got a financial needs, a spiritual need, Lord God, we pray. Lord God, that you would move us on right now, God, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you, Lord. God, we give you praise and glory and honor for it in Jesus' name. How do anybody want to testify tonight? Glad to see Adam and Jessica with us tonight. And little bit. Little bit. Kayla sitting. Haley sitting back. Kaylee sitting back there. Well, I'm old. I'm old. I got a right to. He didn't forget the hostess cakes. We, 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 we're glad that they got to be with us tonight. Go ahead, brother. I want to pray about the thing I told her. If they can offer that on the altar, I don't know who the two little girls who came and prayed for me. But when they put their hands on me, I felt a tingling from my body that it healed my legs because they've been hurting me in my back. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody else. Well, I'm glad to see that the Lord blessed Mary Ellen this morning. Amen. I seen it. Sister Connie went back there and got a hold of her. Hallelujah. I, like Brother Wayne, I could have went back to people. It was Austin. It was Austin. Austin, the one. Oh my God. I didn't say that. I said I was glad that the Holy Ghost got a hold of Mary Ellen this morning. I didn't say that about Connie and Austin. Yeah, you are getting old, Miller. <laughs> Don't be listening. But anyways. Anyway, like I said. God bless her this morning. 
And I was glad to see God bless her this morning. I was like Brother Wayne. I could have went back and called people out this morning, but God said, no, I was wanting them to come on their own. You know, we we believe in letting God be God. We believe in letting God move in the house. Hallelujah. The devil was confused tonight. He didn't know what was going on. Okay, so let's practice some songs. Well, yeah, I want to thank the Lord too. When I left out here this morning, I just kept running through my head. But you just keep saying the same song over. Hey, yeah, Matthew says, Prince and River. <laughs> Prince and River. <laughs> well, Jesus said, Where is the Lord? Come on, Matthew. Yeah. I'm swimming in that Crimson River. I'm, I'm doing the backstroke, buddy. <laughs> hey, y'all hear something funny? One day he's going to do the gorilla stroke. <laughs> Anybody else want to say something for the Lord? six o'clock and we get them back in the bed brother Gavin the next thing we know they're up at right early in the morning they don't want to go to the showers then they want to go pray again so we had a good services I mean man they could shout I was telling them they Cassie and Tanya Cassie had high heels I know every bit that tall I can't remember Tanya had high heels on that night too yeah. I think she did and her and Cassie shouted for over an hour and a half in them high heels did not stop. And if that had been anybody else, they'd have broke that high heel off their shoe if they wasn't in the Lord. And their legs and their feet would have been hurt. But I seen them shout on them high heels. Brother Roger and them high heels, I mean, it was just like, man, they were like spilks. Eh? And the cheers just went like this. I mean, it's just like Moses departed the water. It's just like Tanya and Cassie departed the tears. They just went. Tanya, they just went. No, y'all need open ears. I said Tanya. He said Tanya. See? Lord, touch. 
touch these people's ears in the name of Jesus. Lord, touch Now, when Tanya was your age, she could tell a congregation that this would hurt you. Yeah. <laughs> really? Oh. Well, Adam, you got something to say? I know you didn't want to do. Stand up there and kiss Michael. I do want to thank God for being here tonight. I want to thank you for the Spirit being in here. I want to thank you for everything you gave to me. I just want to say, little man blessed me tonight too. He sat here on my lap and he actually played the tambourine. <laughs> Give him some spoons. <laughs> uh, before we get out of here, she's been having uh, her, in her side hurting. I want like to be able to pray over her tonight. We sure will. Hallelujah. Any bites, will? You know, people say, oh, you ain't supposed to cut up and like, hey, you ain't supposed to be doom and gloom in the church. You're supposed to be happy. We're happy people. Hallelujah. The Bible, but you know, church is done just by over and, and we didn't do it while the Spirit was moving. But laughter is uh, like a good medicine. You laugh, it, 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 it'll heal you. It's been proven fact. So proven fact, as the doctor said, if you can have at least 30 minutes a day, you'll be more healthier than you are. If you laugh 30 minutes, I'm talking laugh 30 minutes a day, you'll be more healthier than you are. I thought, well, hey, we know that was in the Bible. All you do is look in the Bible. It's there. Amen. Come on up, sissy. We're going to pray for you. Amen. Amen. 